This exercise is designed to build skills in the application of basic principles of structure contours. To analyse a simple map pattern of a geological boundary between two units and then to use this analysis to project the trace of this boundary into the unmapped regions of the map. So let's take stock of the information that's provided. This base map has got an orientation and a scale, and it shows the landscape in topographic contours that are separated by 50 meter intervals. So this is the area that's mapped already within the red box. And you can see in it the simple trace of a single geological boundary shown by the green line. So that's the information we're going to use. But along the way, we're going to predict the contents of this borehole location here, specifically the depth at which the geological boundary would be found in the borehole. But at first, of course, we'll assess whether indeed that boundary is in the borehole at all. We'll come to that shortly. So let's go through how we'll structure this exercise. We're going to start off with a qualitative look at the map and assess which parts of the map represent rocks that are above the boundary and which are below. And then we'll add some precision and we'll draw structure contours to predict the subsurface and we'll get to forecasting the depth of the geological boundary in the borehole. Having done that, we're going to extrapolate our structure contour array away from the mapped area, first of all in the dip direction, and we'll use this to calculate the strike and dip of the geological boundary itself. Then we'll move on and extrapolate the structure contour array in the strike direction, and we'll use this information to forecast the outcrop trace of the boundary in the area that's unmapped so far. In other words, more or less under that uh, caption area. And finally, we'll shade in the map to show those parts that represent rocks above the boundary, or more specifically, those that are below it. OK, so let's start off with this qualitative look. So I think a really useful first step is to try and understand the relationship of the outcrop pattern to the topography. And if we look at the map, we can see that this area here is a valley. And to the west of the valley is a hill. You can see it goes up to slightly above 250 meters, close to where the borehole location is. Right, now let's look at the shape that the geological boundary makes through this landscape. And you can see that it deflects in and out of the valley. In other words, it makes a V shape in the valley. And we can use this pattern qualitatively to say that the geological boundary dips southwards. So if the boundary dips south from its outcrop trace, it's going to pass into the hill. And so we'd expect to encounter it in the borehole. And the ground that's deeper in the valley lies underneath the boundary. So that area of the map represents rocks below the geological boundary itself. The unshaded bits, the hilltop, represents the rocks on top of the boundary. OK, so much for the qualitative look. Now let's add some structure contours and predict the subsurface more carefully. So we'll start constructing structure contours one by one. At the two locations I've identified here, the geological boundary crosses the 50 meter topographic contour. So those are two points on the geological boundary at an elevation of 50 meters. If we join these up, that's a 50 meter structure contour. OK, so now let's do the same with other intercepts between the topographic contours and the geological boundary. Here are two intercepts of the 100 meter topographic contour. And here is the 100 meter structure contour that links them. Here in yellow are two places on the boundary at 150 meters elevation. So this is the 150 meter structure contour. Notice that these contours decrease in value southwards from 150 to 50 meters. This confirms that the boundary dips southward, a conclusion we reach when looking at the V pattern of the boundary on the map. OK, now let's use this information to forecast the depth of the geological boundary in the borehole. And a good way to do this is to sketch it up in profile. So let's just draw on a trajectory of a borehole that's vertical, looking side on, and we'll add the information from the map. 
So the elevation the borehole is drilled at, in other words, the top of the borehole, is on the 250 meter topographic contour. So the top of the borehole is at 250 meters. And then if we look at the map, we can see that the 100 meter structure contour passes through the location of the borehole. So the geological boundary is at an elevation of 100 meters above sea level. Therefore, it's 150 meters down from the Earth's surface. So that's the depth of the geological boundary in the borehole. OK, what's next? We're now going to extrapolate the structure contour array in the dip direction, and we're going to use the pattern of structure contours then to calculate the strike and dip of the geological boundary itself. So let's identify some more intercepts between the topographic contours and the geological boundary. There's some here, 200 meters, 250 meters, 300 meters, as the boundary tracks up that hillside. So we can now, from these intercepts, extrapolate the structure contours parallel to the ones we've drawn already, like this. So now we've created an array of structure contours. So why are these structure contours parallel? Let's step away from the map a minute. So here's a block diagram showing an ideal planar surface with a strike and dip shown by that symbol there. And let's think about what the structure contour patterns are on this ideal planar surface. Here they are with some arbitrary values that are assigned to them. Notice that because the surface we're contouring is ideally planar, the structure contours are parallel and straight. And they coincide with the direction of strike of that surface. They're also equally spaced for equal elevation separation. So we can use these two rules for structure contours on an ideal planar surface to extrapolate the array in the dip direction here by using the equal spacing rule and just drawing more on that are parallel to the first set we've already constructed. And we can therefore use this to forecast the position of the surface itself. OK, so let's go back to the map. And we can extrapolate this array and find the structure contour of value zero meters, in other words, sea level, by just using the spacing and putting it in here. And now let's use this array to calculate the strike and dip of the geological boundary. So the strike is the trend of the structure contours. There's a bearing around from north, and that's a bearing of 088. In order to find the dip, well, we're gonna to have to do some trigonometry. So we're going to measure the separation between two structure contours of known value, the 300 meter and the zero meter, and we're measuring this distance strictly perpendicular to the trend of the structure contours. And that allows us to do the trigonometry. So this is the setup for the trigonometry with an inclined boundary, inclined in this particular cartoon down to the right. And we can see that its dip relates to the change in elevation, which in our map, is 300 meters from sea level up to a value of 300 meters and the horizontal separation over which that occurs is 1800 meters so the tangent of the dip is simply the change in vertical height divided by the horizontal distance over which it occurs which is 300 meters divided by 1800 meters so let's just work that out that is a value of 0.167 and to the nearest degree the inverse tan of that number is nine degrees. So that's the dip of our geological boundary. So we can summarize that here. The strike is 088, the dip is 09 degrees, and it's dipping southwards. So what's next? Well, we're going to extrapolate the structure contour array in the strike direction, and we're going to use this extrapolation to forecast the outcrop trace of the geological boundary in the yet to be mapped area. Let's step back to the block diagram. Remember, for an ideal planar surface, the structure contours are parallel and straight and equally spaced. We use this information to project in the dip direction, and now we can take these projections and further project and extrapolate in the strike direction like this, and again, use this pattern to infer the position of the geological boundary. So let's go back to the map. And let's extrapolate our structure contours one by one, starting with the 200 meter structure contour. 
there it goes. And where this intercepts the topographic contour of the same value, here is a point of outcrop on our geological boundary, where the boundary is at 200 meters and the landscape is at 200 meters elevation. So where structured contours coincide with their topographic contour of equal value, we can place a point on the boundary. So let's do it again now with the 250 meter structure contour. There it goes. Identify where 250 and 250 coincide there. So that's another point. Do the same with 300 meters. 300 meters, 300 meters is there. So that's another point. But we can also extrapolate further structure contours onto the map. So here's the 350 structure contour. Again, equally spaced compared to the others that we've already drawn and find its intercept with 350 meters on the map. So here are four points along our geological boundary in the yet to be mapped area. So we now just simply loop these up like this. So there is our projection of the geological boundary in the unmapped area. Let's go back to our structure contour array. So far, we've only projected the higher values. So now let's project 150 down to sea level and see what that gives us for the rest of the map. So let's start off projecting the 150 meter structure contour. There it goes. And as we track along it, we can see that across the map, it never coincides with the topographic contour. So we have no points that we can put onto our map. What about the 100? Well, the 100 structure contour does indeed cross the topographic contour of 100 meters in two places shown by those blue dots. What about the 50? Well, there's the 50 meter extrapolation, and we can see that that too crosses its topographic contour of the same value in two places shown by the green dots. Finally, let's put the zero meter structure contour in, and we can see that our zero meter structure contour crosses the coastline the zero meter topographic contour in two places shown by those lilac circles. So we've got those six points now on the geological boundary, and we know that the boundary itself cannot cross 150 meters, otherwise we'd have a point that we'd have to loop into our, into our outcrop trace. So here's an outcrop trace of the geological boundary down by the sea. And there's our complete forecast of the outcrop trace around the map. Finally, let's just sketch in what's below the geological boundary. We saw earlier that this area is below the geological boundary. Therefore, we can extrapolate that information across the northern part of the map. Finally, for that patch down by the sea, well, within that patch, that's an area that's also below the geological boundary. So there's our completed geological map identifying the continuity of the boundary and identifying the rocks that lie beneath that boundary. So that's what we've done through this exercise. We started off with a qualitative uh, examination of the map and derived some qualitative understanding. And then we've added precision through structure contours, first of all, to test that qualitative understanding, and then to add precision forecasting the depth of a boundary in the borehole and then extrapolating the contour array to continue the geological map into areas that have not so far been mapped at all. It's important to recognize that we, throughout this exercise, we've assumed that the geological boundary is perfectly planar, and that's allowed us to project the contour array in the way that we've done here. You can download a clean copy of this exercise from the ShearZone website, and you can learn more about structure contours on the ShearZone YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.